welcome to Ours Quest Farm uh, Pulses platform. And today we are going to be talking to Stuart Biden about uh, different pulses that we grow at the farm. So Stuart, how are you today? Good, good, David, yes. Yeah, I see you are, you are working in the farm now, like you are checking on your crops. Yeah, yeah, now we're just having a look at um, these. These are actually Dolicus Lab Lab. Oh, Dolicus Lab Lab. Yeah. Are these for human consumption? Yeah, they are. They are um, uh, you probably have to help me out with the name, the local name for these. Oh, yeah, the Njahis. Njahi, yeah. I have a little bit of a struggle with that name, but um, so we're uh, working out how to grow these better and uh, they are for human consumption. Um, so what other pulses do you grow on the farm? Well, we grow, um, we grow green grams or dengue uh, or mung beans if you're an Australian. Uh, we grow uh, kabuli chickpeas, we have grown desi as well. We also grow yellow beans and uh, warimu beans and uh, midamara, rose cocoa. So we, we grow a lot of, uh, they're all human consumption, directly sure. consumed, which is what we like to do. We like, we like growing food. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And how do you harvest the lab lab or the beans? Because I know the combine might be aggressive to the beans when harvesting. Yes, that is a challenge and that's, it's taken us a while to work out how to do it and we've, we now do it with a, we've got a specialised bean harvester and the bean harvester, everything moves very slowly and uh, uh, reduces cracking and, uh, and so we've had to modify our system quite a bit and it's actually a hybrid. So um, if you want to, we can walk over there and I can show you where we've hand windrowed some beans. And uh, yeah, so let's just go over here, David, and I'll and see that it's like you harvested some wheat here last season. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, we're just doing, here's a bit of uh, the wheat stover from the previous year. And uh, so we've kept, that residue is still here. And then we've planted, this here is just a little trial. We're actually selectively uh, selecting um, the plants out to try to grow better, uh, more determinate um, and jahi. And you can see there the pods oh, just loaded. yeah and loaded up. So what we're trying to do is uh, select plants that are a lot more determinate um, because there are, there's a, there's land races of these varieties, but um, yeah, but not specifically for grain. And looking at the wheat stubble, it means you didn't plow this land at all and you planted. No, no, um, we don't uh, plough. This land here, I don't think, has been cultivated for six years. Six. Six years. So it's just been planted and uh, the residue's kept on the surface, uh, which is how nature does it. And uh, yeah. yeah. So in short, you're practising conservation agriculture? Yes, for sure. Uh, conservation agriculture, crop rotation and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, but anyway, let's come over and I'll show you about these. But these are actually, uh, these here are uh, <clears throat> green grams, mung beans. What variety is this? This is KS20. So, uh, yeah. So These are just local varieties. Local varieties and uh, um, they're also called uncle locally, or they even call them makawani. Oh, makawani. Mac yeah, oh, sorry. The makawani. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what do you think will be the yield here? These are, this is a very strong crop uh, and they would have to do two tonnes per hectare. I think they'll do better than that. But um, let's wait and see. How much are you for? <laughs> uh, these haven't had a heap uh, until recently. They had 50, 45 mils for the early part of their crop and then we had 150. So they've actually had right on our long term average, which is 200 mils we normally get in crop, which they've had. Um, but um, if you could grow them like this every year, you'd be very happy. But anyway, we'll wander over here and we'll have a look at these others. Um, and uh, they say that Kabuli chickpeas are named because they come from Kabul in Afghanistan. Um, you can tell they're Kabuli because they have white flowers. The Desi type have purple flowers. Um, and Kabuli type chickpeas are actually um, a white, obviously, the actual chickpea. And, uh, uh, and desis are a tan brown look. Um, but uh, we've actually just planted these simply because this is a part of a trial about, we're gonna use our bean harvester to harvest these to see if we can just do a bit better qu quality than running them through the combine. 
Um, but anyway, let's continue over here. Yeah, no, they're potting, potting up very nicely. It's not a very low plant population, but... Something yes. Looking at my shoes. Oh, yes. Looking at my shoes, they see they're wet, but it wasn't wet when I was in there. No, well, yeah, if you want to have a look, yeah, you'll see that. And if you have a taste of it, David, have a taste. Um, that's bitter. It's bitter. That? It's malic acid that's being expressed out the leaves. And the really cool thing about um, chickpeas is it's not only being expressed out the leaves, it's also being expressed um, throughout the root out the root tips and so that's uh, it makes um, some fo more phosphorus available blah 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 so it's a um, yeah chickpeas I mean I'm a bit of a chickpea fan as you know um, and uh, uh, it's, they've been a difficult crop here in Kenya because of the market but um, you know we're still persevering because uh, like like I was saying we've got a bit of a love affair with chickpeas anyway coming on yeah and this is uh this is the... Um, it looks like rose cocoa. Yeah, yeah, they are rose cocoa. And so what we've done here is we've hand windrowed them with people uh, on Monday this week. Now, currently we're on Saturday. So this was done five, six days ago. So we've... So the beans are physiologically mature. Yeah, they're physiologically mature, although they haven't dried down. So to get Mac the, the highest quality, what we try to do is um, pick them when they're physiologically mature and uh, let them and then let them dry down uh, and hopefully they dry down reasonably evenly. And then if you look down that uh, windrow, the machine, um, we then mechanically thresh them uh, with the bean harvester. Um, so it's a hybrid system. We've got people involved, uh, which yeah, and then at the same time we've got machinery because uh, to thresh these in you know hundreds and, uh, of hectares would be prohibitive. Um, mind you, to hand windrow them on hundreds of hectares is not easy either, but it's doable. Yeah. So, so thanks so much for running us through the different houses in the farm. And I think uh, people will be interested to come and learn about what you do here because Kenyans are lovers of pulses, as you know. Yeah, no, they are. They're very keen on beans and, and it's a great joy to, um, to grow food yeah. and to grow good food. Like, yeah. um, beans are just such a wonderful food uh, with yeah, their hype. I call them madodo here. Right. Madodo chapati. Yes. Uh, beans and chapati. Uh, beans and chapati, yeah. yeah. No. So uh, people will be interested to come and learn and... Um, like you to tell us how uh, how do they get to Ausquest Farm? Oh, well, once again, uh, if you uh, look below the video uh, link, you'll see there's an, an email address and uh, and, the, and there's a WhatsApp uh, connection there, and they can get in touch and uh, yeah, we'll be happy. Book, Book an appointment. We're happy to show them what we do, uh, or they might want to buy some um, uh, pulses, which is good too. Yeah. So thanks so much, Stuart. No, thanks, David.